Hello, my name is Matt Glidden. I'm the senior pastor of Northgate Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have a wife and three kids, 11, 9, and 4, and we just got back from Disney World. Uh, we felt blessed to go and be able to experience the joys together as a family. And uh, a number of times while we were in Disney World, my kids weren't able to see. Part of the struggles or the weaknesses of being a kid, if you recall, is you can't, sometimes can't quite see over people's heads in a crowd. So there was a number of times in which I was there lifting my kids up so they could see. There was a number of times, as I'm sure you can imagine, where I was carrying them after a long marathon day at the Disney parks. Uh, what we want to see today as we look at this Lenten lunch and the passage that's been assigned here is we're going to see Jesus uh, as a standing before the crowds, beaten, bloodied, with a crown of thorns on his head, as a picture of weakness. Let's read this passage together and, and see the picture of weakness that, that John is painting in this passage. It says in John 19, verse 1, Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the others saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered into his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all, unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, in an Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. As I imagine this passage, like I said, I imagine it in my mind as a, a picture of weakness. There stands our Savior, a crown of thorns on his head, a purple robe on his shoulders, beaten and bloodied and about to be led away to the cross. A crown of thorns on his head. As we think about a crown of thorns, I think it's oftentimes in this time of year, we think of it as a, it's a picture of weakness. It's a picture of suffering. It's, it's a picture of defeat as they shove this down on Jesus' head. The tragedy of the story is, is that a crown is typically something you put on someone who is a king to demonstrate strength and power. And yet this crown of thorns seems to demonstrate weakness and defeat. As I think about this, okay, this is a picture of Jesus and weakness. Uh, there are other pictures of weakness that we could paint. Uh, the Apostle Paul paints the pictures of weakness. Um, in 2 Corinthians, he talks about all of the weaknesses he's experienced, how many times he's been beaten and shipwrecked and experienced pain and suffering on behalf of Christ. He talks about the thorn in the flesh, maybe a connection to the thorn of Jesus, uh, of his crown of thorns, but he talks about the thorn in the flesh that plagues him. What's, what's a weakness that you're feeling? There's certainly all kinds of, of illustrations we could give of a picture of weakness. We could talk about our friends in the Ukraine and, and the weakness that they feel in the midst of their situation. But, but what is it for you? What What's a a weakness you're experiencing. Maybe it's old age. Maybe it's a sickness that you're having to endure. Maybe it's a situation in your life that is out of your control. In 
those situations are often the hardest because there's just nothing you can do and you are overwhelmed with the feeling of weakness. As I think of a moment of weakness for me, uh, it makes me think of uh, going to the gym. So I've gone to the gym three times uh, in the last week, so I'm really proud of myself. Um, I'm not a gym person. But a friend of mine has been going with me. So the first time I went to the gym, we did his, I did his workout right alongside with him. We're like halfway through and I'm feeling very weak. Um, but I'm at the gym with people who are appearing very strong. And so I'm doing my best to hide my weakness. I don't want people to see my weakness. I want to be, you know, a buff, strong guy just like everyone else around me. But it gets to a point in the workout where I turn to my friend and I say, I, I feel bad. I feel... I might pass out, um, and so I had to lay down on one of these benches, uh, and um, I could no longer hide my weakness. Uh, people would walk by and see me laying down on a bench, and in my head I am doing what I'm sure you've done as well. I'm talking to God and saying, I'll do anything, I'll go anywhere, I'll do anything if you will just not let me pass out in front of all these people in this gym. <laughs> um, so it... It's a moment of weakness. Uh, it was out of my control. As much as I wanted my body to do something, I could not make my body do it. And it's a moment of weakness. We want to hide our weaknesses. So we chase after power, don't we? For those of us who feel weaknesses associated with our age, we, we try hard to reverse the aging process. For those of us who feel weakness from sickness, we try to cure the sickness. We, we try to fight for more control. We do this in our work. We do this in our relationships. If we're at an impasse and it's like, well, here's a pathway that leads to power and here's a pathway that leads to weakness, it's, it's a no-brainer. We know which path to take. But 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, God speaking, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. So I'm not sure that every intersection in life is an either-or intersection. And it makes me think of that picture of Jesus, bloodied, crown of thorns upon his head. It's certainly a picture of weakness, but I wonder if the way God paints a picture, a picture of weakness, is also a picture of power. It's in the moments of great weakness and pain where we, we are fully aware of our lack of control, it's actually in those moments that we experience the power of God. Which is why Paul is able to write, when I am weak, then I am strong. It's why Paul is able to write, I'm going to boast all the more in my weaknesses. I'm not going to hide them. I'm going to actually boast in them because in those moments I experience the power of God. So my kids, when they come to me and they say, I can't see, and they admit their weakness, their, their limitation, it's in that moment that I lift them up and they experience my power. When they come to me and say, I can't take another step and they admit their weakness, it's in that moment that they experience my power and I lift them up and I carry them. And so a picture of weakness in the beautiful way that God writes stories and paints pictures, a moment of weakness can be a moment of actually of great power. So my prayer for you and my prayer for me is whatever that picture is in our life, whatever it is that we're struggling with, wherever we're sensing the weakness, that we would in that moment be able to tap in and feel God's power in our life and to know that he loves us and he wants to lift us up and put us on his shoulders. He says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. I pray you might sense that today.